Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Psycho. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Time for the final scenario with the Class 159 Super Sprinter, as originally uh, created by Dovetail Games. And a uh, little uh, detail I'll talk about related to that train. I've been talking about how it just doesn't seem to work in the game as well as it should, but I've come up with some understanding as to why that is. I'll talk about that in the video today. I also am going to upgrade the train to the Class 158 Armstrong Powerhouse version at some point after uh, doing this video as well. No timeline on asking before whatever that I play the next scenario with the 158 probably or with the 159 that I can replace it with the 158. Something like that. Um, I'm also looking at plans for the 66 in the future and some other things I'm thinking about as well. I will talk about that all more in the video. What are we doing today? We're doing an extended service. This is a service coming from, I don't know, Axe Minister, Honiton, Exmouth. Probably Exmouth is the service that it would be. So Exmouth gets to Exer St. David's, reverses ends at the station and or changes ends at the station and heads down to Paddington. That is probably what we're doing today because we're just doing an express service on our part, taking over a service at Exeter St. David's, heading to Paddington. No more talk about it. Let's get going. Time to complete the final part of this service down to Paddington. You have just arrived at Exeter St. David's from Exeter Central. Check your briefing to find out your two scheduled passenger pickups. Are you kidding me? I need to check the briefing for two pickups. So you've, I already read the information on this. Okay. Uh, we're going to open the door as soon as we get to the... Uh, no, we're not. Uh, we're going to have to switch cabs in a moment, but we're going to open the doors before we actually do anything to do with switching cabs. Notice we are starting on the wrong end. So if we were to move forward, we're going to be getting ourselves into trouble here because the end we're going to be leaving by, if we don't change, is basically the north end. You can see the default setup for the train is on the north. So we'd be going in this direction and we would basically be running into a buffer way over here at uh, the eastbound portal. That's what we would be running into. So we're not going to do that. We're going to bring up the uh, HUD and we're actually the wrong HUD because we're going to get to the other end of the train and there we go. That's the side of the train we want and let's bring up the correct information. Uh, actually, no, the information is already up. We're just going to bring up the reverser, bring that into a forward position. We're going to bring the brakes down to a level or step one brake. And let's check the briefing because we can. Oh, we actually have some timings uh, for the go via commands in the middle. That is going to be interesting. So uh, passenger pickup is completed. We are good to go. We still have a red signal, so we're not going to go very far. But we are going to go. On this route, you are actually able to pass the red signals without uh, having a game over if you have it set to do that. Uh, the only complication of that is that uh, the junctions may be set against you. And I actually did in my original recording. I plan to keep it as a blooper, but I unfortunately lost the video. Um, if I ever get it back, I'll show it to you at some point. But um, the blooper, I actually did go past the signal and I ran into the junction. So uh, yeah, that is something you don't want to do and it is possible to do on this route. The reason I moved forward as much as I did so early, and I'm gonna, I forgot I need to move the train for, view forward so it doesn't look like I'm, I have a bad cab here. Oh, the black patch isn't on the window right now. That's interesting. Um, okay, so that's interesting. Okay, <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. So in any case, I moved the train view forward and I'm actually concerned about the uh, timing of the scenario because these are go by timings. We aren't looking to make a stop here. We're looking to get to where we need to go as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, given that I've already had one late on a timing in a previous scenario, needless to say, I'm not very thrilled about this. But we'll see what happens. I've already got my thousand points chalked up on the scenario, so in a sense, I really don't care. I froze right at 30. That is perfect. Now we can speed up. I didn't know it did that right at 30 at that level, but now I do. So yeah, we're going to be going via the Star Cross uh, platform, and I'm, because we're not making really any stops, I'm not going to have a lot of opportunity unless I get some stops along the way at red signals. So other than that, I'm not going to have a lot of chance to show you any uh, views as we go. So it's going to just be one straight drive unless something happens. Uh, but I'm going by Starcross, seven, eight miles away. Have to be there in about six minutes. Well, that's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to go to Dawlish, another two miles away. We've got about ten. Well, that's not very, that's very close. And we only got two, a minute, two minutes to do that. Down Torbay follows. We're going to be going by a certain line. That is, how far? 
19 miles. So basically that is uh, roughly about 10 miles away from where we are going to... Yeah, there's... What the heck just happened? Hold on. There we go. Um, Torbay is over there. So basically, yeah, about 10 miles. And we're going to be then going to Pagenton, which is the end of the journey. And, uh, well, you can see we have timings for all of this. So, yeah, we're going to have fun with this. Timings are the bane of a, of a player's existence in this game. On these uh, included career scenarios. Now, I got away as quickly as I could. I should be okay for my timing, at least at Starcross. I hope. I should be okay for that one. We will find out. So while we're on this quiet part of the journey and blowing whistle, while we're on the quiet part of the journey, just a little talk about some uh, future possible ideas here. I was looking at the um, scenarios I still have to, I have to redo for the class 66, and I was re remember from playing the first time that at least one of them had really really bad timings. I'm gonna probably have to redo it just to make sure I can complete it properly. Like I'm gonna have to play it two or three times, and that's probably gonna be the Tuesday recording if I were to do them this week. I do have concerns, though, about even the second of those scenarios. Even though I did pocket a thousand points in that one, it took multiple attempts, and I had to do things in a really specific fashion in order to pull that off. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that uh, with the um, with the actual career version scenario in the um, in one shot. And uh, it turns out, uh, as I'm recording this, I'm going to be here at, on the day this publishes, but uh, the next day I'm going to be leaving for a little while for a couple days. So I have to get another video up for Friday before I leave, have it set for you on Friday. I'm thinking about trying to do a Saturday one as well. And the question I have in my mind is if I can do both of the class 66 scenarios, not counting that really long one at the end, if I can get them both published uh, by the time I leave on Wednesday. That's the question I'm asking myself right now. So I may change my plans to, move, to go right to the 66. And the other reason I might change that is because I'm actually... Uh, realizing I've been in the UK for a while now. I kind of need to go back to Germany and do something. So I'm thinking of heading to the Munich Garmisch Partenkirchen route again. And because I noticed that the uh, 442 talent has three scenarios sitting there. We've driven the talent before, so we know the talent. I can go play those scenarios now, and there's nothing unusual playing them there. Um, now, I know the 2-0, the 2442 also runs on Munich Garmisch Partenkirchen. I've seen that in my notes when I researched the 1442, and the 9442 is in those notes as well. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, 2442 and the 9442 are not in the game, and the 9442 doesn't run on Munich. I just noticed two, the 2442 does. So I can't get those uh, regional models, unfortunately. The 24 and the 94 are not available to me. The 1442 we've already seen on the Leipzig route, which also has a few scenarios left for me to go back for. And um, same with Risa itself. And uh, we've also got. Um, I, there was one more in my mind. I forgot. Oh, I was, I'm also thinking about American Cahun Pass and Rise Pass again, but these are longer scenarios, which means they'd be longer editing process as well. Mostly freight, so it's probably a very quick edit, but um, it's still be a really long video to uh, get produced. So I have to decide how I want to handle that, but I actually am debating now moving to Germany because the three talent scenarios are really short scenarios, and the only question is, will I be able to accomplish them in very quick succession. So I'm going to uh, do some recordings over the course of the day Tuesday and see what I can come up with. I want to at least get the Friday video up, even if the Saturday one does not go up, because I will be at least home on Friday. So it's just a matter of uh, what I can get done. There's the warning for the 75. I'm going to go ahead and do a step one break right now, because that should be a good start. Here we go. Gonna cut it off for a second. I've already got my full score banked, so in a way I don't care what happens in terms of speeding and that, but I do want to show you a perfect run if I can, so I'm gonna try to. We're under the 75 now, that's perfect. We're coming up to Starcross, which is not a stop, we're just going through. We have to be there in about a minute. I think we're gonna pull that roughly off, about a minute and a half. We should be able to pull that off, I would imagine. Unless there's some kind of weird bananas thing going on, which could be. 
Wouldn't be the first time. There's our green. So there's our 80 speed limit coming up, 80 mile per hour speed limit. I know you're, some people are going to hear what I said earlier about the trains I'm thinking of doing on routes I've already visited, and someone's going to say, you haven't shown us any new routes for a while. Well, first of all, I showed you LIR last month. Second of all, I'm uh, trying to uh, do some personal things in life as well, like helping family out and things like that. So uh, it's kind of, and also doing, the third thing, I'm also doing some other uh, interesting little things for myself, including making a couple of uh, scenario uh, scenario potential useful like in terms of making scenarios I'm trying to make my own little timetable so I can dig out uh, timetable info for anything I might potentially make okay control an HSC has had a stop at Dollar Warren due to a passenger needing medical attention due to the train being delayed you might be held up at several points oh fantastic Well, we can go to uh, line speed. We can go at line speed until we see otherwise. I have a feeling we might be seeing otherwise soon. Right now we're fine, so I'm going to maintain for right now. I can theoretically go up to 80 at this point. The odds of that happening are low because there's a 70 up ahead anyway, so I'm probably not going to go up to 80. This thing crawls up to top speed. Never even gets to 100 in the 100, which tells you something. This might be our yellow. Dollar Warren is uh, two signals away. Another train's going to get back on the track ahead of us. Yep, there it is. I'm just going to go ahead and coast at this point, knowing that we're probably going to be held up. A little bit of lag on the uh, trains going by here today. The rain is actually causing a lot of this lag because it's actually taking a lot of uh, frames to run this uh, rainstorm around us. So that's uh, what's causing any lag you might be seeing today. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. And I need to hit that brake now. Concerned about the timing I am. Look at that. 17.55. We're already past our timing. We're technically going to be late at this point. We have to somehow make that timing. I also have to simultaneously hit the brakes. And bring the train down to a low speed as quickly as I possibly can. Can I get a full service brake please? Okay. I got the timing as bonus. But I need to get the uh, brakes on for this red signal. Which I might be passing. Or not. I'm good for the signal. I thought I was actually going to pass that. But apparently I still know my brakes on this train. And I'm in the perfect spot to see this red signal change to a green. So we're going to be uh, waiting here for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a quick look. Back in the cab, you can see we got our yellow signal here, so we are on our way. Now, if we were going just a little bit slower, we might have actually been able to go without having to stop, but the problem with that is uh, we might not have made our timing. So we have to get to the timing when we're expected to, and then we're expected to do the slow passage through the signal. Since we're on a single yellow signal, uh, we have to assume that there is still a train ahead of us that is going slowly, and we cannot just burst up to speed and go. We have to treat every signal like we might have to stop at this point. Blow the horn again. I'm not at full speed for whatever reason. I don't know why I didn't do that. Full throttle. Probably because I have an inclination something's going to be happening up ahead. Is that a train coming at us? Yes, it is. That's 1S47. You can see that uh, in this scenario they went ahead and assigned the uh, head codes to each train, so that was a nice little touch. They're Facing it on a real timetable and they pulled the head code for the train that they're trying to simulate as it goes by you at the time that it's supposed to go by you so that's what they're trying to do here props for that I like seeing uh, real train head codes and timings and timetables and scenarios if possible I am really losing some speed there what happened let's maintain a bit of speed here 42% is just fine since we are on a caution aspect right now until I see a green signal, I am not going up to full speed.
So our next checkpoint is in a little less than 10 miles. We have to be there in 13 minutes. That tells you a little bit something about what's gonna be happening here, doesn't it? I think we're gonna be going slowly. We're gonna be under 60 the entire time, regardless of speed limits. This is why I'm taking my time right now, knowing that we have the extra time. Now, if this was a hidden task, they could have still put a timetable stop on this task and made it a career task, uh, even hiding it. In which case, we wouldn't know except for looking at the task list below. Uh, but the task list below at the on the in the screen at the bottom would actually be saying something else. That is our yellow signal for us, so we're good to go at this point. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little more speed given that signal is looking at our track. Thank you. What's, I wanna check my field of view percentage here. Okay, 90, okay, 96 is good. <laughs> Noted. That is a green signal, I can go up to line speed. Let's go ahead and add some speed. May not be the most advisable thing, but we're gonna do it. I still have brakes on. I just realized that. Whoa. How not to drive a train, ladies and gentlemen. Now I know why I was losing speed. Welcome to amateur hour, ladies and gentlemen. 20, 21 routes, a whole bunch of trains, and I still put the brake on from time to time. Uh. Now, theoretically, I should be able to go up to line speed. The question is, do I want to do that? Since I know we were okay for the, um, just watching my speed, 40 is good enough for now. Since I know we're okay for a line speed at the moment, I know at least I can go as high as I want to and watch for a yellow signal. But uh, knowing the amount of time we have to get to our next checkpoint, I'm kind of thinking we're gonna have a yellow signal here anyway. It's just inclination that I kind of already suspect this. We're not if we didn't have our HUD up and we were not playing on a career mode, I could try to watch the uh, train speed in the cab and things like that. But you know what? Uh, I like to give you the information, which is the reason I bring it up. And therefore, I am omniscient to the fact that I'm going to be going slowly. We still have a green signal. I'm going to go ahead and increase my speed at this point. Knowing that we are under a green signal and I can go ahead and go through all these tunnels. This again was the Kennaway tunnel leading off the whole batch of tunnels on this route. So we're gonna make our way through. We're going another eight miles. I've lost three minutes in that first mile and a half. So adding speed might not be a bad idea at this point. At least until we see a yellow, then we can cut it down a little. Okay, we're going in at 60, so I'll drop here at 55, and we'll just go at 55. Well, the tunnel occlusions work well on this one. I'm okay with this. Green signal. Things are good for the time being. We also are going under 60, which might also have something to do with our timing. We have seven and a half miles and we have uh, eight minutes. So going at 55 seems like a good idea right now, at least getting up to 60 as soon as I can. So the little slow stretch where I had the brakes on, that might've worked out in my favor. I'm gonna take it up to a little closer to 60 at this point because 60 is sufficient for my uh, timing and I can now go ahead and let the speed head up to 75 a little bit well not really because we're gonna have a, six, a 60 coming up again so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, chop it back immediately Take a couple miles there and then we'll chop it back down. Warning for the 60, we just left. 
Green signal, so we can stay at 60. So I said I was going to talk about what was uh, the deal with this train. Uh, remember how I kept saying uh, in pre scenarios that you have a problem with the view here? And how it just looks like garbage? And now I realize I should be going to the 101 instead of the 96. So that probably was a good reset. Uh, so the reason why it looks like garbage in that view is because this train was not designed to be used in that type of environment. Uh, and the reason for that is because the uh, point of view setting that I'm using that shows me the full cab, so the, way, the fact that I can see it like this, uh, the point of view that shows you the full cab, that was added to the game in 2018-ish, when the game was updated in 2018 for that version. Uh, probably for the 2019 version, or it might have been 2017 for the 2018 version, I don't know, one of those. Uh, this train was released in 2015. So this 159 was released in 2015. Therefore, the fact that the 158 pack upgrades onto this means that the 158 pack from Armstrong Powerhouse is also limited by this view problem because it's an older DLC as a result of that. Uh, it's probably an older pack of theirs. And I would not be surprised if in the future they decide to redo the 158 pack based on a newer model of the 158. Now, maybe there'll be another one coming out with uh, design for the point of view to work in a future DLC. Maybe there's maybe the one with Suburban Glasgow will do the job. I don't know. Uh, there's one back there. There's the older Reaver Wales one that could be brought forward somewhere. That could be the one that goes with the future DLC when it gets reskinned to something else. So there are options for DTG to bring it 158 itself. And uh, it would nowadays, it would probably work with the point of view slider because they because it's going to fall with it's usually falls into new DLC. Therefore, uh, they're going to design it to work with the point of view slider, unlike these old models like the one I'm driving right now. So, uh, if Armstrong Powerhouse were to ever redo the 158 pack, I have a feeling they'd be using one of the newer 158 so that people could get the full point of view experience on the train. And I would not be surprised to see that happen at some point in the future. And the reason I say that is because they've been redoing a lot of packs lately. Uh, they actually made a comment they were going to pull the 142 pack, and then people were like, no, it's in every scenario. You're going to break everything. And he basically kept it up. At least, or he is for the time being until he has the opportunity to do something else, apparently. So even though I'm in a 90, I am keeping the speed down for uh, logistical reasons. There's my logistical reason right there. We have a yellow signal. It just turned green, so we're good to keep going for the time being. But we had a yellow signal. So we're probably going to want to slow down shortly anyway, which means... Uh, I'll keep it around 60 for now. But we are going to have to change this. I'm trying to put the train at a coast setting, and I don't think there is a good one here, unfortunately. And there is the other logistical reason for the setting chain, for the setting to stay at 60. There's 60 coming up, so the train ahead of us also is going to be slowing down for that. Conveniently enough. So uh, we have to, um, you know, wait. We have to stay behind it. So are we going to be yellow or are we going to have a uh, green? Let's find out. Okay. Well, we're going to stay at uh, 60 anyway, so I'm going to go just a nudge over right now until we get to the 60. That's our warning for the 60. We're already at 60 because we know we're following a train, so we uh, kept ourselves back a little bit. If you're driving two signal blocks behind a train, you have a higher speed limit that applies for three signal blocks, you do not increase your speed. <laughs> that is how it works. Because it's going to cut right back down to 60 as soon as you're allowed to go at the higher speed. Okay, so now I have to make sure I don't break 61. Because now I will lose points if I'm past 61. So let's go ahead and just keep ourselves within the range of 60 until we're told otherwise by a signal. Which will probably happen when the train ahead of us reaches a 40. Which will, which will probably be close to, well, right up ahead. So a couple signals away from here, we're going to have to start looking for yellows again. 
Now we're not stopping in Newton Abbott, we're just going via the down Torbay line. We are eventually going to be slowing down for that 40 up ahead. I think we're going to be good for the down Torbay route because we are about two and a half minutes to go a little under a mile and a half. So we are in good shape. That double yellow probably is going to matter to us because now uh, trains are being made to uh, warn in advance of trains at platform at Newton Abbott. So let's see what happens with the next signal. I'm going to have to bring it down to 40 shortly anyway, so I'm going to let the train coast at this point. We're going to see what happens with the next signal. It is a single yellow signal, so we're going to put a heavy brake on at this point. It is a green signal. We're going to take the brakes off. But uh, we're going to have a 40 coming up anyway, so I'm going to let the train continue to coast at this point. We're going at least two signals at this stage. This is Newton Abbott. And actually, I have a feeling I know what's going to happen up ahead, so I'm going to just bring that speed down now to 40, so I'm ready, to, ready and prepared. There's our transfer to the down Torbay. We're going down to a 40 for this purpose. We should be good for the transfer junction here. But I think we were under a yellow signal, so I'm going to drop the speed a little bit more just for that reason. Because we're going to cross the down Torbay anyway. So I'm down to 30 now. That's good enough for right now until I change lines here. That way I get out of the way of anything that might be coming. So down Torbay, I think, is going to the left, we were told, on the junction indicator. So here is our left junction right here. 40 is the speed limit for the junction. We're going to move to 45 after we cross the uh, point here. We got our timing this photo, so I'm going to start slowing down now because we are under a yellow. I think that's a red signal up ahead. I don't see any yellow, I don't see any green. That is definitively a red signal up ahead. So we're gonna hit the brakes here. I can see that red even more clearly now. So that is most definitely a red signal. I'm gonna start braking a little bit here so we don't blow past it, which I am wont to do from time to time. I've released the brakes now that I'm under 10 miles per hour. We're gonna go ahead and respond to that. I'm down to five. So the idea here is we don't want to necessarily have to come to a stop at the signal, but we have to accept the fact that at some point that we might have to. And at this point, I think I'm getting down to that point, about six tenths of a mile or six hundredths of a mile away from the signal. We're at the point where we're ready to just hit the brakes. Now three hundredths of a mile away. This point I'm just applying the brakes because we're gonna have to stop. I've resigned myself to that uh, likelihood that we're gonna have to stop. So we're gonna move just a wee bit further. Nice good view of the signal, preferably not where the wiper is not operating. And here we are, we're gonna wait for another red signal.
So continuing towards the next part of our journey here, we're making our way still towards Paganton. We are going to pass Tor, and I believe Torquay is the other station on here, if my memory serves correctly. Now we are, notice the signal went from a green, yeah, from a red straight to a green. So apparently we're now good for two uh, signals because uh, we can now expect a yellow up ahead at the next signal. That signal is only set for red or green. So there is no indication of a yellow on that. So if you have a yellow at the previous signal, you're not gonna get a uh, quicker clearance of the signal because you have to wait for a train to go through a heavy, heavy long section up ahead. Just like the one you see we're on now. This is a really long section that we're currently on. We're going to be moving into a 60, is that a uh, 60 up ahead? We're only in a 45 right now, but because we are under, we're under green, so we could theoretically continue to go anyway without thinking about it, but I'm also looking at the arrival time at Paganton, which is in six miles, and uh, that's a long time to get to Paganton, so uh, something's amiss here. We're going to keep an eye up, at, up ahead here. So I'm not going to spend too much time t talking. I'm going to spend more time looking at what I'm doing, which I'm sure is going to be a wonderful noise for you to hear. Though you are still going to get to hear me explaining what I'm doing because, you know, that's what I do. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to stay at the 45 miles per hour at this time. I don't see a reason to increase my speed beyond that. I know I'm following a train. I know there are some slower speed limits up ahead, so I have no reason to increase beyond 45 if I even get to that. Let's see what the next signal says, and I'll make a decision based on that. Actually, 40 might even be acceptable. I know we're going to have like 30s and 20s up ahead. So staying at 40 right now might be acceptable. That's about nine minutes at a 40 speed to go the full six miles, assuming we stayed at 40 the whole way. And we're following the train. So um, again, let's see what the signal says. We might have another red up ahead. You never know. That might kind of influence what we're doing. The other train is basically causing chaos for us, which is not appreciated. Thank you, other train. You had a 60. You had a chance to speed up. We don't. Look at that. We still have a yellow. What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you, other train? We have a yellow. You're, you're still in our way. What's going on? So I'm not going to increase my speed any further. But I'm going to see if we actually uh, get a clearance and signal staying at this speed. And if we don't get a clearance and signal, well, needless to say, I'm going to have to play a lot more cautious coming into... Oh, yeah. There we go. We're now being warned for a speed that we're currently not going because we have to play, play under caution. I'm going to go a little bit further before I actually hit the brakes, but I am coasting for right now. I'm letting the uphill do a little bit of the slowing down for us. We're going to see what uh, happens with the signal up ahead if we get another yellow signal. I'm hopeful for yellow, but realistically, I don't expect it. As I point out again, part of my goal with these scenarios, besides showing whether it's possible to get a thousand points on a scenario or how you can fix it if you need to to do it that way, uh, besides all that, is to actually show you the um, thank you, is to actually show you a successful way to complete the scenario. So part of the thing is just to show you how you do complete the scenario. A lot of them are can be pretty straightforward, but there are some that are a little trickier to understand or things to do with uh, signals on the way that you have to plan yourself around. So. There is a little bit of a thinking behind that. Now I see why we're going slowly. There's a 30 speed limit up ahead. We just don't see it on the HUD yet. That means the train ahead had to slow down for that 30 in the next signal block. I don't know why it wouldn't have cleared by now. I don't see the signal yet, so I'm going to kind of just keep the brakes on for a moment until I do. Yellow. We're good. Keep going.
So I'm continually redoing the math in my head here. We now have about a little over four miles to go to get to Pagenton. We have a green signal, so we can actually go a little faster now, but only up to 30. So we got four miles to go. If we if we stay if we were to stay at 30 the whole way, which is going to be impossible, but and this downhill is also going to make it a little hard. So we're going to have to watch this downhill. I'll keep it up for now, but I'll drop it in anyway in a moment. Uh, so knowing that we have uh, a little less than four miles to go, we could do it in eight minutes at this speed. We still have a couple minutes to spare. So yeah, we're going to be slowing down some more. So notice we have the 30 up ahead and then the 40 after that. I'm saying that like I was, I'm surprised. I'm actually not surprised. I knew that. <laughs> We have a downhill going in a tour, and then tour station is pretty flat. Now, this could be a symptom of the game where you can't have a, uh, and this may have been something that was figured out later than this route, I don't know. But uh, something I learned about this game is if you uh, have a route and you have a uh, situation where you're on an incline going into a station, you cannot level out that incline in the station because it causes problems with the station's passengers. Uh, looking like they're walking through the platform or something like that. So if you're on the incline, you have to stay on the incline. If you go in straight, you have to stay straight until the end of the station. Uh, how they deal with ones that uh, go into an incline in the station, I don't have a full accounting for. I assume whichever one is uh, more of the station platform is the one that gets applied. So you, you either stay on a ramp the whole time or you stay um, straight the whole time, depending on which one has more of the platform, my guess would be. Now, in theory, they could break the station into two separate segments and have each platform section work separately. I'm sure there are reasons they don't do that. I'm not going to try to uh, pick apart uh, any specific situation based on that. It would also have to have a really, really long platform in order for that to work, and for some shorter platforms just is not feasible. So they're more, it'd be more likely they would increase the incline slightly going in and then flatten it out, or if it's on incline the whole time, they would just keep it going, whatever the case may be. So I'm not going to try and pick apart any specific route here, obviously. We had a green signal you might have heard. So we can just proceed at line speed at this point. We also have a 30 because uh, we're still under that. We have a 40 coming up. You notice that we did have a moment where we were just coasting there with no brakes and no accelerator or throttle. Uh, that was because that was the flat section going through Tor Station. Tor K is going to be coming up now. Oh, 40 is now our speed, so I can speed up now. Now this could be a yellow signal up ahead, so this may also impact what we can do up ahead here. We're now over the 30 speed that I was using for my math earlier, so we're going to be gaining some time on my uh, math at this point. Which means I probably don't want to take too much advantage of it. So uh, let's put the brake on. Now coming down two and a half miles. Based on 30, we'd be there in five minutes. We're going to go down to 15 at some point beforehand too. So I still assume we'd be there at 827, 828 or 627, 628, I should say. So that seems a little too fast for the timings this game usually gives us in the scenarios. I'm just going to assume that we're not going to get it that easy. There's a yellow. Yep, I knew it was coming. There's a yellow. Welcome to Torque. We're now on the uh, stretch to, um, well, straight to Pagenton. The two miles to Pagenton. And we are under a static yellow at this point. So, uh, yeah, somebody's slowing down for a 15 up ahead. And we know that the uh, very likely the train's going to stop at Pagenton because it is the end of the service. And he's probably going to head in the yard so we can uh, pull in as well. He'll eventually either park the, at the yard for the night if it's, his last, if it's the train's last service or he'll pull in the other platform and leave after we've done the scenario. I don't know. So uh, it'll do what it does. We're just going to finish ourselves up however we need to. Yeah, two miles. I'm not worried about going twenty about going speed limit anymore. We're going to stay way under the speed limit at this point. We are well in time here. In fact, I think we're going to get a red up in the uh, near future here. So I'm going to just put even more speed down. My current speed would allow me to go a mile in three minutes. So I've got this clocked. By this point, less than two miles away, you can go down to 20 if you're uh, more than six minutes away from your timing. They don't want you early. They want you on time. They don't want you to show up three minutes early because then it screws up everyone else. I 
Unless there's no one ahead of you, and that's another story. I mean, it's always possible the timetable uh, advertises a certain time, but you actually get a different time. I've been looking over the um, some 2022 timetables just out of curiosity. I've noticed some of the letter codes, like a letter code V saying that your uh, train is advertised to arrive earlier than, than the... Uh, or advertised to leave... No, I'm just thinking about that. Advertised to arrive earlier than it actually does or something like that. And then a P code, I think, is a train advertised to leave... Oh, sorry, to arrive later than it does and to uh, depart earlier than it does is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to stop uh, confusing myself because I think there's... I think we're going to have a red up here. I don't have the signal yet, but I don't see anything. Oh, we have yellow. Okay, we'll speed up. Because I got down under 20, my math is no longer checking out as well as it was. So I have to get myself up to 20 temporarily. Possibly a little faster. Especially because I know it's a 15 up ahead. I can't go 20 in that section. So let's take a little speed now. We're about one and a quarter miles away from Pegton. I believe the signal coming up is the last signal. Yes, it is. So at this point, I can just pull up to that signal and stop. And if that signal is a red, well, then I stop. If that signal's a yellow, I can go straight to the station and I'm done. So we're just going to base the rest of our scenario on that one signal. I'm going to take the speed the rest of the way here to that signal. And we'll slow down a little bit away from the signal to see if we have to stop. And for the 15 anyway, because, you know. That was the warning for the 15. I actually wasn't ready for that. That's why you heard a long signal there. Or a long alert. Now, if I'm a fact about the route, I'll just show you very quickly. When you look at the route map, you're going to notice the route does go down to Kingswear, but there actually is nothing down to Kingswear. So you're not actually going to be able to see anything down there. This is not a complete route. The scenery just doesn't go all the way down. And I think they were planning to do the extension to Kingswear as Payware DLC at one point. Then they just decided to do everything in the 50s and put it out as a single route. So now there's two Riviera lines. There you go. I'm assuming that's how that worked out because this route came out in 2014. The Kingsbury route came out in 2016 as a different route, not as a route extension. However, if you do get the, uh, the that's a yellow, or is that a train up ahead? That's a train, 1M80, okay. So if you were to get the BHBP route, the Berks and Haas to Bristol and Penzance, the section of the route to Paganton and down to Kingsware, I believe, is on the route, and I believe it's completed. I'm not 100% sure if it's completed because I haven't run it, but um, I believe it is a completed route. So uh, don't quote me on that, but the fact that it's in the route tells me that they plan to at least have it completed if they don't already. That is a yellow signal. We're good to go now, and we're at 15 anyway, so we don't need to actually do anything to our speed at all. Just maintain 15 the rest of the way. That is an error, by the way, that noise you heard. That should be an alert warning us about the yellow signal up ahead. But uh, we're given a green. That is an error that has never been corrected. We're bunching slightly into the 16 at this point. I need to stay under 15 shortly after the signal when we hit the 15. I took slight advantage of that 16, but I don't want to uh, do that once I'm in the 15, because we have a perfect score going. Why ruin it? That's why I'm not going to be late, right? We are on a downhill, but the downhill is starting to shallow, so I'm going to try to uh, watch our speed. I actually don't mind getting it down to 10 right now if I, if I um can, but I'm actually okay at 13. I'll stay at 13.8. That's a good speed. So pulling into Paddington, you're going to re remember that the uh, steam railway starts next to us, to the left of us. And this track does eventually merge with it, but uh, again, we're not going to be taking that track. Uh, the track also goes into its own DMU parking lot, which we're not going to use. So we're now at our final stop at Pagan. I'm going to pull up right in front of the uh, shed icon on the HUD here, because why not? 
nice and proper. Put all those passenger cars right up next to it. I'm going to go step two to get this train slowed quicker. I see a yellow up ahead somewhere. That's interesting. Anyway, opening the doors. We've arrived, and that is that. So let's uh, look at the train and finish the scenario. Interestingly, the uh, signal ahead of us has actually turned green at this point, so we are technically clear to go into the yard if we so choose. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to so choose. We're not going to be uh, doing that. Someone else is going to take the uh, duty to move the train in the yard. We're going to go home, apparently, to our house in Pagenton at this point. So uh, we're done our service here, and we're going to just go and have a dinner break, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we're going to just go do whatever at this point. So, yeah, that's the end of the 159 series. We're going to get the Armstrong Powerhouse model on here at some point. And uh, we're going to start playing around with that one as well. But for right now, I'm going to move on to another train. Well, not sure if it'll be the 66 or if it'll be the um, Talent 442 back in Germany. I kind of want to do the Talent 442 in Germany now because they're short scenarios and it'll give me a chance to get a little ahead again. So I'm thinking of doing that. Um, in any case, nicely done. The service will formally return to London Waterloo for its final duty in 10 minutes. I guess we're pulling up so we can pull in the other platform. Uh, for now, you are all done here. Well done. Not really going to break if we're driving that one too. Anyway, to the... Uh, Scoring screen. And there it is. Uh, so yeah, that's that, that's completed and no problem with that one whatsoever. So that's actually a fairly benign scenario. If you accept the fact that the timing on the um, go via after Starcross, I, let me see what it's called again, the Dollar Warren timing. Uh, if you accept the fact that timing is not the right time on the map, but you're still able to make it on time as long as you go in at a proper speed, uh, you're okay. You get the full score is easy and definitely possible on this. So there you go. Science proven. And as you can see, no experience gain because I've already done this scenario. So that's not a bug like the other ones. I actually have basically done this scenario already. So there's no extra experience to gain. So that's that. I'll see you next time for what I do next. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever you're part of the world. Stay tuned for more Riviera Alliance scenarios in the future as well because I do want to, even though I'm starting to run out of DLC to run on this route, I do need to get more of the 50s route in because I have played the. Um, that three pack of trains, the 42, 52, and 35 already on that route, on the Riviera and the 50s route. Not in that order, I think 35 was before 52, but I've already played that series. I do have to play the 52 on this route as well because you saw two scenarios on here as well. Plus I think a couple in standard, but uh, one or two in standard. But um, yeah, other than that, there's I'm running out of DLC for this version of the Riviera line and I'm gonna have to eventually uh, come back to this version of Riviera line with other stuff or just play it on the BHPP route, which I might very well just do. Uh, and that'll be a chance to introduce the how that route looks in uh, Train Simulator as well. I'm, they're doing that for present day and they're keeping it constantly updated. I assume it looks fantastic. So we'll find out at some point when we do that. That's not now though. There's too many special trains on that for me to do it right now. I have to make sure I got all the special trains for Sarah's on that route before I can do it. In any case, have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it is for your part of the world. And I will see you next time for more Train Simulator Classic with um, either a German talent or with a 66. I have not yet decided. Uh, I might do the top first and the 66. We will see. I'll see you next time for whatever it is I decide to do. See you then. I'm Psycho. Bye-bye.